We do begin with breaking news. Former President Trump responding moments ago after history made in this country today. A president criminally charged, arrested, and appearing before the judge. Tonight, former President Donald Trump has been charged with 34 felonies, the first president, former or current, to ever become a criminal defendant. Trump himself today pleading not guilty, the charges unsealed, accusing the former president of falsifying business records to allegedly conceal other crimes. Prosecutors say a catch and kill scheme, catching stories, paying for them, and killing them, getting rid of them, concealing them from voters before, of course, the pivotal 2016 election. Prosecutors today citing three different hush money payments, the former president's solitary ride from Trump Tower today, uh, watched on live television, the images all day, former President Trump's route through the cleared streets of Manhattan to the criminal court downtown, alone in the SUV, accompanied only by his Secret Service agents, on the way posting to social media, in fact, saying, seems so surreal, wow, they're going to arrest me. A wave as he entered the courthouse to be fingerprinted and processed on a lower floor, then taken up in an elevator, usually reserved for judges, to the 15th floor courtroom. His eyes locked on that camera right there in the hallway. His aides say he was angry but resolute, aware of the stakes, they say. And then the images from inside the courtroom where no TV cameras were allowed. Trump's team argued that that would lead to a circus-like atmosphere. The judge agreed. Only still photographers allowed in before it started. Court officer standing behind the defendant's table, the former president seated with his legal team, but standing and speaking for himself, answering not guilty to all 34 charges. At a brief news conference afterward, Manhattan DA Alvin Bragg defending the case, answering the question, why now? Saying prosecutors now have new evidence they didn't have before. ABC senior investigative reporter Aaron Katursky leading us off on this day and on the former president reacting just moments ago. Tonight, Donald Trump, the first president in American history to become a criminal defendant. All day, New York City on high alert, police lining the streets around Trump Tower as Trump raised his fist, giving a wave as he stepped into a car. As his motorcade made its way downtown, sources tell ABC News that apart from his Secret Service detail, the former president rode alone. No lawyers, no family, no advisors with him. Approaching criminal court in Lower Manhattan, Trump posting on social media seems so surreal. Wow, they are going to arrest me. Outside court, small groups of supporters and opponents. Police keeping the peace as the former president arrived. Inside, Trump surrendered. He was arrested, booked and processed like a common criminal. His fingerprints taken, but no mugshot. Trump was taken upstairs in an elevator usually reserved for judges, stone-faced officers escorting him into the courtroom. President Trump, will you come speak to us, President Trump? Then that first picture, Trump at the defendant's table, his shoulders slumped, hands in his lap, flanked by his lawyers, court officers standing behind him. Minutes later, the indictment unsealed, the former president himself pleading not guilty to those 34 felony charges that he repeatedly and fraudulently falsified New York business records to conceal criminal conduct that hid damaging information from the voting public during the 2016 presidential election. Trump then walking out of court without a word. How did you plead, President Trump? How did you plead? Prosecutors allege Trump orchestrated a criminal scheme with his former lawyer and fixer Michael Cohen and his friend, former National Enquirer publisher David Pecker, to pay hush money to at least three people, including porn actress Stormy Daniels. A catch and kill scheme. That is a scheme to buy and suppress negative information to help Mr. Trump's chance of winning the election. An effort allegedly to prevent damaging stories from tipping the balance in a tight election where voters were unhappy with both candidates. Prosecutors say in a 2015 Trump Tower meeting, Pecker told Trump he would act as the eyes and ears for the campaign by looking out for negative stories. And in June of 2016, just months before the election, they say Pecker informed Trump a woman, believed to be former Playboy model Karen McDougal, had approached the inquirer claiming she once had an affair with Trump. Prosecutors charged that Trump was concerned about the effect it could have on his candidacy. And he and Pecker and Cohen had a series of discussions about who should pay off McDougal to secure her silence. Ultimately, the Inquirer paid McDougal $150,000 for her story, but never published it. Prosecutors allege Trump also arranged for a $130,000 payment to Stormy Daniels a few months later. And the Inquirer paid off a Trump Tower doorman who was trying to sell a story about Trump fathering a child, a story the tabloid later concluded was not true. 
The indictment charges Trump disguised the criminal scheme by falsifying business records. 34 false statements made to cover up other crimes. These are felony crimes in New York State, no matter who you are. We cannot and will not normalize serious criminal conduct. But tonight, Trump, back in Florida, is defiant. And I never thought anything like this could happen in America. Never thought it could happen. The only crime that I have committed is to fearlessly defend our nation from those who seek to destroy it. And as we watched the former president fly back to Florida from New York, his lawyers came out to tell us they'd be filing a flurry of motions to reduce the charges or dismiss the case. Prosecutors wanted to go to trial in January 2024, but the defense said that would be way too aggressive. David. Aaron Katursky leading us off here tonight. Aaron, thank you. And of course, we're also learning more about the dynamic in that courtroom. After the political rhetoric in the weeks before all of this, the former president taking aim, then the power shift with the former president, now a criminal defendant before the judge. Let's bring in ABC's chief Washington correspondent, Jonathan Carl, live here in New York for our coverage. And John, our team in that room describing a very different dynamic playing out in court today. David, Donald Trump is accustomed to being the center of attention and in control in whatever room he walks into. That was decidedly not the case today inside that courtroom. As he walked in, Trump looked as profoundly unhappy as I have ever seen him. A deep scowl on his face. He was in the courtroom for 57 minutes, surrounded by his lawyers, police officers standing behind him. He had to wait for about a full five minutes before the judge entered the room. And when the judge walked in, Trump had to do what everybody else had to do in that room, stand. It would be the judge calling the shots, not Donald Trump. Our reporter in the room, Olivia Rubin, noticed that Trump spoke so softly that at one point the judge said, I can't hear you, and asked him to repeat what he was saying. Speaking softly, that's not something we see Donald Trump do ever, uh, if at all. Uh, and I suspect, David, that as we go on, he will not be speaking softly for long. John Carl, our thanks to you and Olivia Rubin, who was in that courtroom. I appreciate it. There are a couple of key legal questions tonight before we move on. So let's bring in our legal analyst, ABC News contributor and, of course, constitutional law professor Kate Shaw and our chief legal analyst, Dan Abrams. And, and Kate, let me begin with you, because for all of this talk about Stormy Daniels uh, and Michael Cohen, David Pecker's name emerged right away in this indictment, the former owner of the National Enquirer and this alleged catch and kill scheme that we've reported on before. That's right. So David Pecker, former National Enquirer chief, former close Trump friend and ally, is a central player in the scheme that the indictment today sets forth. This catch and kill scheme basically seems to have been crafted back in 2015 when Pecker, according to the indictment, says to Trump, we're going to be the eyes and ears of your campaign. We'll help look out for damaging stories and we'll help kill them if necessary. And so the indictment walks through a couple of episodes, one involving a Trump Tower doorman who was paid to conceal a damaging story about an alleged out-of-wedlock child, a payment to former model Karen McDougal, also to conceal a damaging story about a relationship with former President Trump. Um, so this is someone who, according to the indictment and the statement of facts, was intimately involved in all of these events. We know he testified twice before the grand jury at the beginning and the end, so he could be a critical witness at trial. But Dan, still a very difficult case to prosecute. Yeah, I mean, look, there's the facts and the law. The, the, the facts as laid out today uh, could be a compelling argument. But before they even get there, they're going to have to overcome the legal issues. For question one, what is the crime that prosecutors are alleging escalated this from a misdemeanor to a felony? So far, the Manhattan DA is being pretty vague about exactly what that crime is. There are potential statute of limitations questions here. So expect some not frivolous, very quite serious motions to be made by the Trump team to try to even prevent this from getting to a jury in its current form. And just a couple of moments before I move on, but we have to remind viewers at home about these other cases. The special counsel investigating January 6th and classified documents appearing to move very quickly now in Fulton County, Georgia. Right, and remember that, of course, in the federal case, the special counsel, we're talking about obstruction of justice, is, is the bigger issue with regard to those documents, in addition to the January 6th investigation. That is moving very aggressively and very quickly. And how soon could we hear from Fulton County? Fulton County, Georgia, I think is moving, if anything, even faster. We could hear any day. All right, Kate Shaw, Dan Abrams, thanks for your coverage all day long here today.
Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.